All right, today we've got a good video coming up. I just want to thank you for clicking. My name is Fire. I'm the IGL for Team Inferno. So, oh, just a little, just a little heads up. This tier list is opinion baited, like all tier lists are. But if you do disagree, I understand. It's completely reasonable. But only God can save you at this point. With that being said, let's hop right into the video. Great at getting people out of cover. Great end game legend. Really a stack of damage when people have only small things to play. Really good movement on her passive. But what I see in her is a very hard playstyle to fully bring out her full character. She's great. Even if you master her, you can probably play her at an A tier level. But right now, I can't see her anywhere else besides B. Still, probably one of my favorite legends. All right, we got probably one of the most famous characters, most played. We got Wraith. Nothing much to say. You gotta take an angles. Get a place. Flanks. 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 God damn it. You know what I mean. Safe escapes. Rotates from the team. Only reason it's not S tier is because cover is a lot spread out in Olympus. Very spread out thin. So you gotta be very smart. And that raises the skill cap on the character. But if you can play her right, probably the best top rank, like top 0.1%, can still play her at an S tier level character for a ranked Olympus. Now let's move on. And now we got Watson. Honestly, she's got a better character this season. I'm happy for her. She's finally in the spotlight as a defender character. She gets her, her, you know, chance in the spotlight. After not being seen for many, 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 many seasons. Her ability to cover more ground will be a lot better than Cossack in the open fields. Her ultimate being able to not only generate fast shields, destroy nades, you're able with her passive to cover two ultimate cells and both fully refill her ultimate. Crazy. Honestly, if you're looking for a defender character or to hold a god spot early, I prefer you go Watson way over Caustic. And that doesn't get some. Yes, she has no fighting capability with her ult, unlike Caustic. But if you're going to be playing a defending character, you should be look to defend and not so much attack. Alrighty, now we got Valkyrie. Okay, another strong S tier. Huge open fields in Olympus. A lot of chokes and third parties. You're going to be put in a tough situation. Only character that's going to get you out a meaningful distance is Valkyrie. Her rotations, her mobility during fights, all great things. The other characters is Valk or Valk. Valk. <laughs> that other characters just do not have. Alrighty, alrighty. Up next is we got my boy Seer. Not bad, not great. A kind of worse Bloodhound. Can be better in a lot of situations. Um, compared to Bloodhound, like if you want to know exactly if someone's gonna be pushing a corner and stuff like that, and his Q is like nothing like it. And probably in the game, canceling abilities and tacticals and heals and raises through buildings. Mastered can be really good, but for right now, I kind of just see him as the worst Bloodhound, especially with his ult not being able to move and people just being able to run away from it. Kind of sad. So we're going to have to leave him right there for now. Now Revenant. Kind of big surprise he's down here on the list. Last time we had Olympus ranked, this, this man... And Octane were menaces, but ever since then, they have received nerfs on nerfs on nerfs for their playstyle. The reason he's not lower is because he can comp well with Ash Portal. He is still somewhat playable with Ash Portal, and his silence is still pretty strong. Being able to disable any Legend's abilities for 40 seconds. And I'm pretty sure that also includes Gibby's Gun Shield. Nerfing that and his bubble, he can, be, he can, he can, you know, he can, he can show up late game. Imagine ulting a Gibby with another Gibby ult and then silencing him so the team just has to take it. Now that's pretty crazy. But if he had no combinations or no use in his tactical, honestly, he would probably be just down there with Rampart. It's Rampart. You know why. Again, she I think she'll always be down there. I don't know, I don't know what to do. I thought her ultimate buff a few seasons ago was going to change her. No. You were so slow to move with that. You can make some fun, fancy little plays, but in overall skin compared to every other character, you're not getting that much out of her. I, I'm sorry, I just gotta leave her down here. For the love of God. This is not even a tier list. This is not even a tier list coming at this point. This is more of a message to respawn. 
Do you do you hate Lifeline? Like, do you, do you seriously hate Lifeline? Do you think I like putting her this far down on the fucking tier list? For the love of God, a buffer already. If you're gonna let her be the only true support who actually heals characters, like holy hell, this buffer. That's all I gotta say for her. I'm sorry she's down here. Like, all of all her power is in her drone or her passive. Her power is relying in you just getting screwed over. And if any team is smart enough to capitalize on any of your mistakes, you're just screwed. It's terrible. It's sad. I hate to say it. Let's move on. God. Ooh. Now this is going to be another tough one. We got Pathfinder. This was a hard one. My boy got... But my boy, my boy got to go and see it. Okay? For now. I know you might see some of the best players use him and perform really well. But the truth is that that's the top point, 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 one percent of players who are incredible with his grapples and his movement. He provides, sadly, just his kid is just very lackluster compared to the rest, the rest of the other legends. And it sucks to say, like his passive is literally just to reduce his ultimate, but you have to literally go to a beacon and scan. Even respawn themselves don't know what passive to give him. He has a good play rate, so they don't want to buff him. He's kind of he's kind of stagnant right now. I can't see any buffs they're gonna give him soon, and they're not gonna nerf him. So he is what he is. Really good movement, but that is it. So he's gonna have to stick to the C tier. And my boy Octane. Hate to see him. When I got start playing this game serious, he was at the top for a good time, but now I cannot put him anywhere else above C. His tactical is very risky, especially on getting flanks. It's loud. People can hear it. It's very loud <laughs> in a game where no audio seems to be a, a huge problem as well. You're going to be taking fights and angles with less health. Your jump pad is not as great as it used to be. Your passive, your like self-regen is not great what it used to be. He becomes, he starts to seem more of a liability pick than a good pick for ranked. Still fun as hell. Probably the most fun and most played legends. But I cannot see him being anywhere above C with how risky his tactical and his ultimate can be. Now here we see my boy Mirage. Probably one of my favorite characters lore and story-wise. Very humorous. Still, towards the bottom tier list. I don't think anything's going to change that. But usually I would put him further down the tier list, like next to Rampart. But a funny thing about Mirage, and I'm pretty, more, pretty sure more and more you guys understand, uh, playing against him yourself, he seems to be more and more viable as time goes on. There used to be a huge surge of Mirage players, but ever since that went away, people were getting tricked up by his abilities a lot more often. And I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't play in Pred with another guy who also runs Mirage a lot this season and seeing it happen to like the best players. His ultimate, really distracting. His passive, take and be invisible, can get teammates up surprisingly well. His ability to also res beacons while being invisible, like res on beacons and being invisible, that's also <laughs> something I forgot about. His ability to help his teammates is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, way better than I thought, or remembered at least. So not too far towards the bottom, but nowhere near the top. So let's move on. And now for Loba. Some people think I'm crazy for putting her so high. Honestly, some of you might put her higher. Her ability to keep her team fully stocked with resources also contributes heavy to team fighting. To be able to have several nades. Nades are very important. The higher you go up, wipe a team out really fast. Able to keep ammo up, another good thing for fighting. Also able to keep resources up like hills, bats, syringes, all that good stuff. Being able to have the passive of landing on a 50-50 and be able to scout out the best armor or possibly, you know, purple armors in the vicinity. And having your team fully kitted out even before you reach a fight, it's, I don't know man, There's something about that really good. Even if you're holding, like you're like the last position on the map and you're holding God spot for the final ring, be able to be in that spot, not having to move, loot everything around you and constantly like nade a team out of their position, constantly be able to poke damage because you're not running an ammo. It's just, mm, I, can't, I can't put her lower than A. If you lose, she's not that hard too, especially with her tactical being a reposition. It's it's hard to put her anywhere lower. If you go the basic low book, she's not a hard character. I believe anyone can put her at A. All right, probably the most underrated pick coming out of this entire tier list is Horizon at A tier, all right? Super underrated. Has a, has a bit of a learning curve, I'll give you that, but massive potential in the team fights and a great get out of jail card with her Q. 
It is perfect for also getting your team up on those vertical heights. Great ultimate once again. Ah, oh, I just, I can't. I just can't see why people don't play her more. I know people will have the idea like, man, just shoot her ultimate and it's done. But here's the thing. If you're a smart horizon, you're not going to throw your ult in a position where it's just easy to be eliminated. You're most likely using it on buildings. You're most likely coming out of the wazoo throwing it. And most people are not that coordinated. Horizon still works in the pro scene against teams. In the pro teams. You got teams who are like throwing bubbles down because they know they weren't, they're going to be able to destroy it fast enough. They all focus. Because if you get your eyes off the enemy team as they're all coming up horizon ult, they have angles on you now. They're looking at you while you're looking at their ultimate. It's just so good. But yeah, I, I, I gotta put it right there. Now we know him. I had to put him up here. But he's not going anywhere for a long time. We're just been talking about him. It's Gibby. You know why he's here. His bubble. His green shield. His fortify. These things are just, just crazy. He is literally free RP. Quoted by some pros. It's the most disgusting thing ever. When pros feel like they're losing, they'll be like, we need to Gibby. He is probably the best character in the game. And, at the same time, the most unfun character to play. But if you can sit through playing Gibby, and learn his stuff, you will literally be like, top one, top ten. Like, like it is not surprising that a lot of people have Gibby's on their pants. You will probably be the best player in your friend group. Hold the highest RP. Alright, that's enough set for him. You already got too much attention as it is. My man, Fuse. Now, probably my favorite character, by design. Solid at fighting. Great endgame legend. Great breaching, great for breaching buildings. And always remember cure needs. He's a solid B. Can't put him any higher, can't put him any lower. I thought about C. Thought about A. It just B sits right. You learn to play him, not, not master him, just learn to play him. You'll you'll realize he is strong, but not strong enough. And that's all I can give my mentor right now. Hopefully he gets a buff in the future. I would love to see him a higher up the tier list. Now this pick right here may surprise a lot of you. Some think he should be lower. Some think he may be higher. But I, I just can't see Crypto anywhere else besides the C tier. Now let me explain. Let me explain. I I, I mess with Crypto. I want him to be good. But he's just, he's just not there yet. His drone, really good now. Not really good. It's okay being able to throw it out and get a scan. But when it comes to like above platinum level play, that drone is going to be so, like the higher you climb, that drone is going to get way, way, way more vulnerable. His ultimate, great engage. But if you don't get that off, you are not, like all your abilities kind of go into that drone. You are just a character without abilities at that point. It's going to suck. But... I'll tell you this, his if you play him passively and not so use him for fights, you can pump him up to a B tier with performance. Being able to scan for third parties when you're before you take a fight, be able to scout areas end game, ring, for cover to take, is also really good. But if we're being honest, these levels of play of crypto are more geared towards AWS playstyle and not so much ranked, where everything's quick and swift and not too much slow. So I'm gonna have to keep him at a C tier for now. Hopefully, when his when his heirloom releases, they give him more love. Now, <clears throat> feel sad for Caustic. Don't really want to put him down here. But with his recent nerf, it's too huge, too big of a downside, especially on Olympus, with his durable traps and his smaller buildings. He can easily get naded out. It is often sad. It's really sad. Honestly, I don't care. I hate Acoustic. Holy crap, I'm happy he got nerfed. I'm sorry to see him down here, but golly. Couldn't be happier. My god, he was a menace on World's Edge. I hope most of you guys agree with me. I, I'm sorry for you costing me, but the man was a menace. It literally felt unplayable sometimes. Alrighty, moving on to Blood. The strongest S tier. And probably will be X tier for the next coming season, unless they receive a nerf. Which they probably won't. One of not the best legends on fighting in Olympus, known for the third parties, and Blood excels to clean up fights fast. You know, Olympus, third party central. If you want to get in and out of there, you better have a Blood on your team. Clean up fights fast, and while you're in Golfed and Old, you can scan behind you, 75 meters, or look around. It'll let you easily detect if a third party is approaching. 
Mwah. Perfect S tier character. All right. Now it's Bangalore. Probably one of the few controversial picks. I'm gonna go a little more in depth with her over the other legends. Give her a little bit more time so you understand why. Her passive, double time. Great at escaping surprise flanks, surprise openers. Great at getting to cover or escaping hard, hard encounters, okay? Huge fields, we talked about this. It's Olympus, you know where it is. Great for covering sm her smokes, are great for covering rotations and her these big, big vast fields. Her ultimate, great engagement and disengagement. And if the building has someone camping on the roof, they will get off due to just bang old, okay? Literally all her kit does it just works perfectly for Olympus. Now I'm not gonna go into the exploit. People, some people call it exploit. Some people say it's day one. Regardless, Respawn has not mentioned or talked out about it, saying it's something that's gonna be removed or a huge thing they're planning on removing. Let's just say this. That's another thing to add to her kit. So right now, Bang is a solid A tier. Solid. Alrighty, and now we got Ash. I don't think most people know why Ash is S tier on some people's character list or A tier, just really high on the tier list. It's because she kind of fills the role that Octane left. Usually Octane was a high, high pick for a lot of seasons due to his jump pad, be able to get fast engaged. Mwah, perfect. But with the seven nerfs to Octane and Ash coming out, where her tactical being able to track people in the map, or her passive <laughs> being able to track people in the map, where her tactical able to lock people and her ultimate able to take a whole team right on top of a building and capitalize off a lot of damage. Mwah, perfecto, S tier, great fighting champ. Alrighty, that's gonna wrap it up for me. I just wanna thank you guys for clicking on the video. I know some of my opinions are a little wonky, I understand, but I have a lot more videos coming out that are even crazier and opinion based. And if you wanna yell at me in the comments of those, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.